Hello and welcome back. Glad you're here. So this is the Perry Roubaix. This is the second Perry Roubaix film. The women racing. Unbelievable how long it took for this race to be open to the women to race as well. And this year they've also made a uh, marked improvement in the uh, equalization of prize money as well. So we're still early in the race. Well, not so early, 52 kilometers left to race. So a little over two fifths left to go. And this, so what, so I do paint this live. So right now, or close to live, I've slid a little bit behind real time right now, but nevertheless. Um, so this looks like it could be what may be a winning move there on the uh, 12th section of Pave, Pave meaning cobblestone. For those of us not using French as our dominant language. <laughs> Obviously, I'm speaking to you in English, so French isn't my dominant language. The best I can do is what I call Taurus French. In other words, I can get a few ideas across in French when I have to win in France, <laughs> which is where we're racing today. The um, Perry Roubaix is on the very north east corner of France, right up against Belgium, where the women and men have been racing for most of the last month. Well, of course, there have been races elsewhere, but nevertheless. So, but the point being, so with the live, this looks like it could well become a winning move. And the woman I'm painting right now, Lottie Kopecki, is having one hell of a spring season. Either winning or being a factor in every race she's put wheels to. These two have taken one of the Pave sections to jump free. It was Kopecki who initiated the move. <coughs> hey guys. And of course there are my dogs barking at shadows and leaves and who knows what. So where was I? So Kopecki has been having an amazing race. So these two have hit this 12th section of Pave, the Doche, and just ridden away from everyone else. The lone breakaway was caught a little bit earlier. So anybody off the front now is is gone, so. The thing with Perry Roubaix is, unlike a lot of the Belgian, the races in Flanders, the Tour of Flanders, or on de Vangle, this is a very flat race. And it's really all about the cobblestones, which are incredibly tough to race on. Particularly, the women are doing 100, I mean, not 100, 125 miles of racing, or 129 kilometers of racing. And 29 of those kilometers are actually the Pave. So it's a whole lot of jattering and shaking. I live here in Richmond, Virginia, where the uh, world championships were back in 2015. And they raced on some Pave here. So I have... I have no race experience on Pave, <laughs> but I have ridden it. And the basic idea of riding Pave is don't. <laughs> it hurts like an SOB. Because these are not smooth. They're cobblestones. They're made of granite. And 
feels akin to running, riding over a wall. I don't know what, sorry, couldn't finish that thought. <laughs> so this is the ink part of the piece, drawing that out. And now I'll start laying in the colors. And as I've said many times before, I work lightest to darkest colors, warm to cool, all in an effort to keep things from getting polluted. My brush was a little dirty, so boom, polluted already. So starting with the yellow, now Kapeke is the Belgian champion, so her kit is um, the Belgian flag, as is her helmet. So as I look at it, so, you know, work through the yellows and come in and start doing the skin. Now, should I have a woman of color, of course, that being inherently a darker color, I would postpone that perhaps. Now see, like this has bled over, but that's not gonna be a problem because the kit, the top of her Jersey is black, so it will easily hide that mistake. And that's the big thing you have to get used to with watercolors is mistakes are permanent. <laughs> there's no erasing, there's no painting over. Like I've got a problem right there. Look, I missed. <laughs> Her leg is out here. So, but again, my green will allow this field behind. I will be able to correct that as I move forward. So that's one of the things you have to learn. You have to be adaptable. <laughs> Because there's no erasing with watercolors. When it's down, it's down. <laughs> so just working through the warm colors. So this back in the background now, part of it could just be the dust on this road coming across, but these trees almost appear to be red to me. And speaking of red, that would be the next in my progression of color. switch over to cool and generally speaking our start with the blues before I switch to the green But I'm going to leave the sky for later. Now I'm realizing. 
times and I miss something here, so I'm going to come back and hit it again. I'm going to give a little more pop to that jersey. All right. Of course, this, the green of the fields will help to pop. Now, one of the things that's a bit of a challenge is like this van is white. So always in watercolor, anything that's going to be white, you will have to um, leave the paper because it's a translucent. You don't have white as a color other than the paper that you don't paint. Now there is a technique you can use. Um, and in the immediacy of these, I don't choose to do it, but you can actually put down a resist. Um, now they actually make watercolor resists. Now, I don't use them, but you can also just use rubber cement and then um, come back. So you put down the rubber cement where you want things to do white, like it's really useful if you're painting um, rapids or water or anything, you can actually lay some of that white in to get the foam of the water. And But you need, of course, obviously plan ahead. And then when you're done, you take um, a special kind of eraser that's designed to pick up rubber cement. I believe they were called picks back from the day when I used to use them. And then you can pull up that rubber cement because the paint won't stick to it and it all comes up. And then you have a white, but I just choose to um, um, just not paint where I want it to be white. So that should be most of the green. Now I'm going to shift over to getting the pave done. So like I first did that little hint with the blue because it can be shiny. Now this particular edition of Perry Roubaix, it's very dry. The last last year, and it was raced in October because it was delayed due to COVID. And it happened to be very, very wet. The men's race in particular was a muddy slugfest. The women was sloppy, but not quite as um, awful weather as the men experienced. So normally I title these things before I start painting, but I'm going to do that now, call it. Calling it, is this the move? So now I'm going to build this black that I've talked about before using purple and a deep green. About equal proportions and now I'll come in and start laying in these. So here, see now I can get rid of that skin that the paint of her skin so that now her face is actually yeah, keep making mistakes while I'm doing this today. This painting may be a perfect lesson in accepting the mistakes.
before I start this next, make a little more black. And you notice I get, did all of her kit and now I'll shift over and do this one just in case I don't build the exact same black. And see, now that I've laid in the black, I realize, oops, missed some green. So there's always this, you know, come back and touch up, get the things you missed. So there is, you know. No hard and fast rules on how I do these. These are sort of my, oops, hand shaking a little bit. So maybe I'm telling you what I intend to do, and then in terms of how I lay it in, and then doing what I actually do. <laughs> Best laid plans, right? So I think I want to get this leg corrected first, because again, it's the warm color. This, actually, we're going to get a little bit of the hint of the dust first. Then we'll lay in the sky tones. Now, this is going to be because it's so a wash. So I've got a lot of water in the brush. And I can just add some more water, pull the paint across. Now pick up a little bit more pigment. A little more water back and forth, just getting this to be not too many brush strokes. All right, and then we just have to add this grass back in where I missed. And there you go, that's the piece. Now, of course, I haven't done the, you know, please give me a thumbs up. I hope you like what you see. All the paintings from this race, you'll be able to see at my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. Don't worry, I'll put that into the description below. And uh, give us a follow if you would. Always appreciate it. If you like what you see. And please feel free to comment. Let me know what you think. It's always nice to know. Thank you all.